Corey here with Toothless Reptiles in San Diego. We're actually not in San Diego today. We're in Cali Mesa at Castles for Reptiles. Um, if you guys are ever in the market for wood for your reptile enclosures, they have a bunch of amazing stuff. They have manzanita, a bunch of uh, grape vines, tons of driftwood. We were just out here picking up a ton of stuff. Make sure to contact Juan. You can find them on Facebook. Um, I don't know if they ship, but they do sandblast. They make a lot of ornamental pieces as well. We got an entire truck full, and then also, oh my god, we got it all loaded up. And we got an entire trailer full of awesome stuff. So, I mean, you look at with just the size of these pieces, we're going to be able to do a lot of amazing stuff. Bam. A lot of amazing stuff with these things. So the idea is we'll be able to actually use a lot of these hollowed out ones that are hollow in the center as lay box areas or hide areas. We can actually use a hole saw, put a hole in those, and put an HD 4K camera in them. And uh, it's going to be cool. This is when the enclosures actually come to life. So if you guys are ever in the area... Cali Mesa area or if you want to drive out to the LA area and pick up some stuff for your enclosures you're not gonna not find what you want out here at Castles for Reptiles so make sure to check it out oh my god keep me keep me down. Okay folks, so as you guys already saw, we made a trip to Castles for Reptiles, got a bunch of driftwood. Um, and the plan for today is to actually get these two water monitor enclosures up and running. So um, I need to finish uh, concreting in these ponds. So these ponds, um, the tops of the ponds were the plywood. That's actually getting uh, concrete on it. Um, so basically what I do is I'll halfway put screws on the top of this to act as, as something for the concrete to grab onto on the plywood. And then I'll pour the concrete down. Um, I use like a super fast setting grout, uh, non-shrink concrete. So I can get it up there pretty thick and it won't crack when it dries. And then also, you want to make sure you mix it kind of thick because we're going to kind of be forming the edge as we go. So we don't want it to obviously flow into the pond because this um, is kind of already at pond level. So we're just going to flow it out there. Um, I got four bags. I think we should be able to do both ponds with four bags, but we'll find out. Um, so I'll mix up two bags and see where that gets us. And uh, we haven't put any of the new media or anything in the pond yet. And right now we're still just running the pond uh, just to kind of make sure everything's working. So uh, if we do get some concrete in the pond, it's not the end of the world. It'll just dissolve and then we'll, we're gonna do a complete water change anyway as soon as everything's done. So uh, we'll keep moving forward. Hopefully we can get the pond concreted in. I wanna add some shelvings to the walls on both sides because we need to add a basking area, which is what this huge boulder is gonna be. There's gonna be a light above it that'll create, turn this boulder into a basking area. And then um, we'll get the driftwood in here to hopefully make it actually functional. Um, this side of the enclosure will be easier to make functional because this is where Onyx is going. The other side is gonna be the pain in the butt where Yoshi is going. She is. 16 years old so she's not the most mobile lizard anymore so uh, we kind of have to make everything uh, handicap accessible so kind of you're you're sacrificing the looks of the cage it's not going to look very naturalistic but it will be very functional for yoshi and that's all that matters so um all right well let's keep uh moving forward and uh i'll uh start the time lapse now and then i'll touch base with you in a little bit keep feet
Those reptiles top tip moment. Anytime you uh, concrete around one of these ponds, um, number one, you don't want it perfectly flat and smooth because that kind of defeats the purpose of being able to have something abrasive next to the water because it helps with keeping their nails from growing too long and it also helps them get in and out of the pond. But ultimately, let me switch this around. What you do want to do is wait for this stuff to start uh, setting up like it is now. Get your hand wet and then go over it um, and uh, you'll be able to feel any of the stuff like like you see that once that dries that's just gonna be a super sharp thing that the lizards it's gonna bug them so just keep getting your hand wet and you can go right over everything and uh, It'll smooth everything out. I mean, you're not going to try to, you're not trying to make it perfectly smooth. You just want to get off all the stuff that you know the lizards aren't going to like. So go back over it with your hand. Make sure you wash your hands pretty quick when you use this stuff. It will get into your pores and crack your skin. So, okay. Keep it. <laughs> We just finished another very long day, Mark and I, and we got a lot of the little stuff done today that I wanted to get done as well as some other extra stuff. But some of the cool stuff we got done, we now have at least two of the cages are functional um, and we can continue to add some cool stuff as we go. But. See if these things will focus. Um, we have, these are the two water monitor enclosures. So Onyx will be in this one. And uh, why is this thing not focusing? There you go, buddy. So Onyx will be in this one. So we have the 250 watt ceramic actually heating that boulder. And then she has a shelf. She can get up into the pond. Um, the pond has all been concreted in. This side is pretty much almost all the way dry. And then obviously she can get um, from the pond up onto the shelf that goes up to the door so she can kind of check out what's going on. She's really inquisitive, so she'll be hanging out up there. And then um, they can dig until their heart's content on the ground because that goes down basically for forever. So uh, that enclosure is set up to where it's functional. I mean, we'll add more stuff later, but for now we just want to get them functional and then we can adjust as we go. Um, same thing with this side. This side's set up for Yoshi. As you know, Yoshi is super old and she can hardly get around at this point. So we didn't do any of the fancy driftwood stuff in here because she really can't use any of it. So we just have a ramp going up to the pond area. And then on this pond surround, we actually used a lot more um, it's a lot more abrasive 
of a grout to surround the pond and that'll help her get in and out of the pond. Um, we still have to put something in the pond. We're just waiting for this all to dry. And she has her ramp that can go up to the shelf if she wants. And then we have her basking area down low where she likes it. And that's all hooked up with a 250 watt ceramic. We'll end up adding a second 250 watt um, probably there anyway. Um, as well as on the other side. It's going to take a lot of heat energy to heat up that boulder over there. So, um, And we also, oh I forgot to tell you, so we got the flow issue figured out with the river. So we ended up adding a, uh, a three inch overflow now that fills, that flows um, and feeds the river. So no matter how much water we pump out of the pump, if we have it on full blast or not, we can overflow um, more than enough into the river. It actually kicked the flow rate up quite a bit to where it's almost kind of uh, a little too much. So we actually backed it off some, um, but we don't have any of that on right now because our fittings are drying and the top of the ponds are drying. Um, and we still want to flush out this entire system. So we're going to wait and get all that stuff done. I mean, I threw some driftwood pieces in here just basically for storage because we had tried to use them in Yoshi's enclosure, but there's just no way it's going to work. And then we got all of these enclosures sheeted. So these are the other 16 foot tall enclosures. Um, they're six feet wide by 16 feet tall. One, two, and three. And then we also got the big eight foot wide by 12 foot deep by eight foot tall, uh, big male black dragon cage sheeted. And uh, if you'll see, because our big black dragon is a total a-hole. Uh, I kind of triple screwed everything that's down low as well as we added some bracing across the back so if he pushes on the walls down low it's not going to flex anything and these walls already have extra bracing behind them because they're taking the load from the deck that's going up here. So everything should be coming out pretty well so far. Um, we're going to make a cover that actually comes out and down with a skirt to cover up uh, the um, liner that goes into that pond. And uh, my dad will actually make that out of some aluminum probably uh, early next week so we can get that on there. Just gotta send him some drawings. And um, that's pretty much it. So we got a bunch of little stuff done today. All the ponds are concreted in. These two cages are functional. We'll get the, everything dry, so we should, I mean, technically we could put lizards in these two cages tomorrow, um, but we'll probably hold off on that just to see what else we can get done. Donald's coming by tomorrow, so we're gonna try to get the big stuff into the big enclosure so we can start sheeting uh, the fronts of these things. So we're gonna finish up the shelving and all that other stuff tomorrow, but we'll go over that tomorrow, but. ah. It's been a long day, so um, keep feeding. I'm going to bed.